So what I've done is I've set up this scene to make life particularly difficult for myself. I have my spaceship hovering over a terrain, some volumetric orange gas cloud, and I've set things up so I've got quite a narrow field of view, which works well for these elements in the foreground, but not so well for my background. Now this disk and this disk here, these are bright stars, and I don't really want them to appear as disks. I want to see them as points of light, for which I would need a much wider field of view, potentially, is one solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this current camera position so we don't get lost and widen the field of view up to show you what I'm talking about. OK, so this is my gas cloud effect. Here's my terrain that's supposed to be the moon and there's my ship in the middle and I've got all these lovely stars in the background. But now, as things stand, I'm too far away from my scene. So if I switch to the overhead view, what I could do is I could take my camera here with its wider field of view and move it in towards my subject. So I'll just roughly reposition it now and uh, lift it up out of the ground so we can see the ship and give that a quick render. OK, so now I've got the stars, but a couple of things. I've lost my volumetric gas cloud and the terrain, so they'd need to be repositioned. And also, compositionally, my ship looks quite different. With a wider field of view, it's got this exaggerated perspective. So that isn't really the direction I want to go in. I mean, widening the field of view gets the stars in, so potentially I'm thinking now, OK, what I'll do is I'll render the stars separately as one render, render my ship in this position. I'll go back to my original position by recalling the camera position. In this position, mask the two together. OK, so there is a bit of an issue here. If I use Bryce's standard masking cell, so I'll get the craft and then uh, this sphere which is the gas cloud and this group which is the ground there and then go object mask it just appears white because of this volumetric gas cloud is just seen as the object on which it's applied so I'd have to turn that off and and then object mask without that so this is now in the way so I'd have to say hide it and then object mask render with these objects selected so it's already getting a bit fiddly as you can see uh, right so I've got those selected now and then I've got my mask but I haven't got my gas cloud and I won't be gas cloud so to solve that I would probably be thinking now well I need to modify the material of the gas cloud so it appears white set all the materials on this to white but I've got volume effects on these so I'd have to make them faded grey and this would be white and have to render a black and white render in standard render mode and this is getting needlessly fiddly there must be a better way to do this so I'll, I'll make my gas cloud appear again on hide it so this is what I'm getting round to now in a long winded way say there is another solution but I just wanted to explore other ways of solving it to explain why you'd want to go through what is about to be a little bit of a fiddly process to show you that it's worthwhile. So what I'm going to do is switch to the overhead view, bearing in mind I've saved my current camera position, that's important. Switch to the overhead view now and select my perspective camera, go to the attributes and set it down to the origin of the world and take away its rotation. There we go and then I'll just zoom in on that now so you can see where it is what it looks like. So this is the default state of everything zeroed, what I call facing north. A side view, keyboard shortcut 3, gives you an idea of how our scene looks. And what I'm going to do here is create a sphere, default by sphere. It's appeared at the origin. And I'm going to set that down to the origin so there's no confusion. I'm going to change its family grouping so that it's going to be our lens. Okay and I'm going to modify its attributes so it's positive because you're going to have to build this lens, it's made of two components. Having got this sphere, use Control c and Control v to duplicate it. Then use Edit Command and convert it to a cube. Hold the Shift key down and on this front handle oops, that's got hold of part of the camera, sorry, on this front handle there, crush the cube so that it occupies half its original space. So it's towards the back of the camera here because we're doing everything at zero so we know where we are. We're all on the same page, hopefully. Modify the attributes of this cube so it's negative. 
then select the lens grouping, group it, give the entire family group the same colour and what we've got here is now a hemisphere. The next step is to modify the material of this entire object so that it's got no diffuse, it's fully transparent and it's no refraction. So this creates a specific kind of lens that will allow us to do some things that you wouldn't normally be able to do in ordinary everyday optics. So Bryce lets us do something unusual here. Go into the attributes for this and link it to the perspective camera so that when we reorientate the camera it remains in the same relative position. So wherever we put this lens relative to the camera now it'll stay that way when we move the camera back to where it was viewing the scene. The next thing to do is zoom back, enlarge our lens significantly and then move it out in Z space because bear in mind we're still at the origin so that it's behind our scene. Enlarge it again. So the idea here is that this lens which bear in mind it's cut off just there is not interfering with our scene in any way we don't want it to interfere with the scene we want the front part of the scene to be under one field of view regime and the back half thanks to our lens to be under another so what I'm going to do now is go back to the original camera position then switch back to the side view and you can see that our lens has moved in the scene in an inconvenient way because it's now cutting into the scene and also it's at a bit of an angle because our camera is at an angle and the lens goes where the camera is but we don't need to go back to the origin to reposition the camera we can switch to object space now and still move it along its z-axis and that will be moving it away from the camera perpendicular so back to the camera view and we'll see what effect putting this lens in has had so maybe now you can see the backdrops changed and the stars are looking a bit smaller. But we can exaggerate this effect by expanding the lens, which uh, is still selected. I'll switch the overhead view so you can see this happening, but you can do it from the perspective view. I just want to show you it happen. If we expand the lens, hold the Alt key down so it goes in both directions, object, stretch it out like this. This is the lens surface where it's cut off. That's where it's receiving the backdrop and then go back to the main view and what you should have is a lot more of the backdrop in the scene. There's more tricks we can do with this lens than just that. It's quite a versatile tool because of the way that the optics work and I won't bore you with that because it gets quite involved but you can do a lot with this if, if you're prepared to investigate it. It's used in other products like um, the anaglyph generation process and the spherical mapper and things like that. If you it, the lens structure changes, but the optics remain the same. But this is using it for a different purpose. So these objects are in the HDRI backdrop. Now I could rotate the HDRI backdrop, but by the same token, because of the way this lens works, I can rotate the lens and make it point at different parts of the sky. So on its y-axis, if I rotate it round so it points round to the right so long as I, I, I do it within a reasonable range obviously if it fates us away from the camera entirely it won't work I can shift the view to bring different things into view if I want to drop these below the horizon I work out which way is pointing it up and point it up out of the way and remember on the z-axis because we're in object space we can just crush it on the z-axis and that will focus the sky in so by moving the z-axis around I can focus in and out on the backdrop and by rotating it around here on its y-axis and tilting it on its x-axis I can just make it point at different parts of the sky. Rotation along the z-axis won't work because we're in object space, it'll just be turning around the lens around on its axis of symmetry. Now you can experiment and I encourage you to do so with changing the shape of the lens, crushing it and rotating it and things like that, but essentially that's all I need, really needed to show you was that if you place this lens well out of the way of your scene make sure that your camera is looking at the cut face of the lens you can use it to adjust the field of view of the backdrop so you can incorporate more of your backdrop into the scene so now I've got nice glowing pinpoints of light that are the stars there's another tutorial that shows you how to set up glowing stars if you're interested in that kind of thing and I've got more of the HDRI backdrop that uh, comes from the product made by Horo and myself there are several of these uh, products in the Dasbri store that in revolve around space scenes. So there's HDRIs and constructions so you can create uh, galaxies and uh, black holes and all kinds of weird stuff. But essentially that's by the by. The, they just took these components from one of those products so I could make this scene that demonstrates uh, what uh, 
what I wanted to explain. As you can see that the volumetric cloud does tend to slow things down, but once you've set your scene up, you can always go away and make a cup of tea if you wish. All right then, cheers now.